Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Kaysen. With me today is life coach and LOA teacher, Joel Elston. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Joel, this is uh, my second show of the day. I do two shows now on Monday. Uh, this one and I do a show earlier with Anne-Marie Young uh, and finished off that episode earlier today. And I was I, I was feeling a little bit off my game, so to speak. So I'm really looking forward to the conversation tonight because whenever you and I talk, first of all, it's always fun. We have a great time. And sure. second of all, the topic that I picked up, I actually picked up off of your timeline, which I so often do off your Facebook timeline, um, because you posted something about why it is that people become happier and more content as they get <clears throat> as they get older. Or I, I think probably the correct way of saying it is why people can become happier and more content as they get older, which I found to be fascinating because I – well, it's fascinating on a number of levels. First of all, after my divorce, I've gotten out to see more of the world than I was seeing before, meeting new people and so forth. And I've been fascinated slash horrified <laughs> by some of the people that I've met in our age group and wondering like, wow, it's, it's kind of hard for me to understand and comprehend and believe that there are people who've just let their lives slip so much. In so many yeah. ways. Yet I also know I'm mean, from our conversations and everything else that I've talked about here on the podcast and the guests that I've learned from and so forth. I, I'm certainly very aware that your thoughts become things and the vast majority of people don't know that. And so they end up creating rough lives for themselves. Um, and yet there are also people who manage to feel really good coming into the stage. In fact, they, they become happy. They become quite content in their lives. It's an interesting dichotomy. So when I saw the post that you posted, I said, okay, that, that's an interesting topic. I'm going to be curious to see uh, what Joel has to say about that. So yeah, I love the topic. And, uh, the, for me, the idea of aging, you know, I never liked the idea of aging. You know, the, it, it, it sort of scared me for a long time, mm. uh, because I had a, uh, sort of a expectation of what aging looked like, right? A lot of people that, that, you know, don't do anything. They get weak. They, no. you know, all, all that happens. So when I realized along the way that, that my life is so much better now than when I was 30, right. uh, it, it was my brain's a lot better. Is that I've, 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 my brain is much calmer. Uh, it, it's functioning better than it did at 30 for sure. Uh, I keep very active. As you know, I'm in the gym every single day. I, I have not shockingly have not lost that much strength. Uh, so physically, I feel fantastic. Mentally, I feel fantastic. But I think one of the number one things that helps is this is uh, with age becomes a, a perspective of you don't care so much what everybody else thinks. That's I think that's a that's a, a big thing because for so long I lived life worried about what people would think of this or what that and. As I've gone through all I've gone through and, and aged as, as, as age has allowed me to, I, I think you know me well enough. I have zero concern what anybody else thinks about me at all on any level. It's just, it, 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 you, you may like me, you may not like me, and I'm not antisocial, but I am just simply, uh, I, I don't care. And, and that's, that's a great, that, that makes life a lot better because so many people, I know people, again, our age that are, Still stuck in the worried what everybody else thinks category, mm -hmm. and they're, they're they're miserable. I mean, they're they're still uh, living that same thing. And I just you know I I don't have uh, don't have worries. I don't have fears. I I you know really just just sort of get up every day. I, I love the life I have. I want to live. Uh, in fact, I really want to live as we were talking about before the show. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know it, the the idea that that. I actually, I, I spent a lifetime building the life I have. I view it that way. So I am far happier today than I was at any point in my life. And, uh, I, I contribute that, as I said, to not, number one, not worrying about what other people think. I'm living my life authentically for me. That's really the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was noticing something today too. Um, I've been, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I was noticing that when, when I am encountering something in life that I don't like very much, I certainly don't have the reaction that I used to have. It used to be that I'd kind of, you know, fight back against it, go after it, whatever. I don't do that quite so often. In fact, I pretty do, do it pretty rarely. 
Um, most often I'm practicing some variation on acceptance, you know, go with it, let it be, all that kind of thing. But I also notice that even when I'm doing that, there's a little battle that goes on inside of me. Like outwardly, I'm doing everything I can to just, you know, put myself into that calm place. But there's that little piece of me that's fighting. I, I find that really, really interesting. Because yeah. Because is that, I, yeah, I've grown over time. I've gotten to the point now where I'm a lot more uh, calm and at peace and so forth, certainly outwardly and to a degree inwardly as well. And yet there's that little bit that I just won't let go of. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, and I think all that, you know, I don't know if it all goes away every time or eventually it gets better. I, you know, I, I think, again, it's bio-individual based. You know, it's what matters to you, your makeup and all that. But I, I, you're, I'll bring this where it makes sense, okay? Tell me if, if you're going to think I'm on the deep end right now, but I'll make it make sense here. Okay. okay. So, you know, the idea that I was talking to uh, a friend the other day about, He's very into Buddhist thought, and he he said uh, he said well I, he used to have a you know, pretty wild background, and he said I'm no longer capable of violence. Hmm. And I said okay, well that's good. And uh, he goes, he said, are you? And I go, oh, I'm capable of extreme violence. And <laughs> and he was like, oh, are you working on that? And I go, no, I I. I I have that under control. I don't unleash it, but I, if I ever have to pull it out, it's there. And it, I just bring, and I, it doesn't come out, but the idea that, you know, I have situations where I can still go to that place. I don't, I never view that as a bad thing. I don't use it, but it's there. And so sometimes my point to bring that up is sometimes we hold on to little bits of things. Just to hold on, they may be protective in some nature. You know, it could be your body or your mind's perceiving there's value in holding on to something like that. Does that make sense? Uh, well, it makes total sense. I'm sure that yeah. that's the case because why else would I hang on to something that was so negative? Yes, it's uh, like it's like people I worry. To it's negative. I find I gotta find value in it, otherwise there's, right. there's no point in hanging on to it. Right, right. The idea that that we know worry and you know, being anxious and worry has no real value, but yet we it feels like it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, but having a little bit of anxiety or a little, it's protective of a little nature. You want to you 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 want to be on alert a little bit. You know, people that have no anxiety at all tend to this is fact. Uh, there's people that are born with that no, the, no emotion of fear, for example. Mm. And they tend to die very young because they yeah. don't have any governor. And that's, that's fine. So having a little bits of those things sometimes are, you, you know, you, you don't give up all of that, but you, you, you don't let it master you either. And I think that, that that's part of the process. And you, you, you don't want to keep being that same person that you always were that wasn't there, but that piece of staying there, obviously your, your subconscious determines that has some value to keep it. Yeah, I especially like that last bit where you talked about how you don't want it to master you. Yes. That literally is the truth. One one of the things that we have a tendency to do as human beings is to say, well, if I have a negative emotion and and I'm thinking about it, it's really not good for me. I shouldn't be focusing on that. You know, that's uh, I should I should just tear that out and I should only be focusing on positive stuff and that's just not realistic. That's not the world no. we live in. It's not I mean, right. we're going to encounter stuff that we don't like. That's part of why we're here. It isn't, it isn't whether we're going to have the emotion or encounter that stuff. It's going to be, what are we going to do once we get it? That's really well, the question. And that, that becomes the whole basis of Abraham Hicks's, what they used to talk about, the emotional guidance scale. Right. You know, where you, you know, the, the, they, they're very big believers in, no, it isn't that you don't want, the emotions are telling you something. Just, more, it's more important in, in realizing my emotions are here and I need to move up. I need to move up. The scale. It's not really even mattering why they're there. It's just get up the scale, you know, move up. And that moving yeah, up is, is, is the goal. It's, it's yes, the yes. goal. Yeah. Because you can get stuck in the minutiae of trying to figure out why versus, okay, this is how I'm feeling. I need to, re, you know, I need to reach for that next step up. Like if you're horribly depressed, uh, anger is a step above that. So while anger is not a great emotion, it's better than being suicidally depressed. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it, it moves up. Now, your goal is to quickly move on to the next one, but 
anger is an improvement over some emotions. And a lot of people think, well, I shouldn't feel angry. Well, if it's an improvement of emotion, it's okay. It, it, it's, it's not acting on it. It's not controlling you. It shows that you, you go from lethargic, I don't care. Anger means you care. And that's a yeah. movement up. Yes. Right? That, yeah. And that, that, that ties in perfectly with what I was thinking. Anger means you care. Yeah. So, yeah. so when, when there's something that I'm feeling angry about it, first of all, the body language that I'm getting to my, for myself, you know, I'm, right. I'm getting a, a physical signal to myself because I'm feeling that anger and I'm feeling it as a, as an unpleasant sensation going on inside. Right. When I'm getting that, it's basically reminding me, yeah, you don't like that thing. Right. Not, not, not <laughs> oh, I'm going to dismiss that thing or, oh, let's just we'll pretend it isn't there. No, I don't like that thing. Well, that, really that's what like it's there it. for. So yeah. if, if, if you have somebody that makes you angry, if, if your perception is, I know you make your own self angry, but the presence of somebody creates anger within you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what that's saying? Let's don't be around those people. Let, 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 let's yeah. not be around those people. If, if you don't like a situation, let's not go to that situation. Exactly. You know? and, and, exactly. and that's all it's there for. It isn't wrong. It's just telling you, hey, it, it, this is your, you're in charge of this and not being around stuff that causes this in you. Uh, I, ha I have, you know, if I have a client that, I have a couple of clients that I work with. They're, you know, I love all my clients and everything, but sometimes there's some of them that, you know, like, oh, you got to take a little extra breath and, and get mentally prepared because it's, you know, you, you go in there and, you know, those sessions tend to last like 17 hours in that hour, you know, uh, and then I have somebody that's really, you know, really into the process and we're talking about stuff you and I talk about and, and like that, you know, that hour is about a minute kind of yeah. thing, you know, it's, just, it's like, boom. It's reversed. So again, it, it, it's you're. We need to identify what we want, who we want to be around. There's people like I don't. I don't like to go out just to go out. I, you know, but if I have somebody I want to go out with or do something specific, I, I love to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't, I'm not just. I don't have a need to go out and socialize a bunch. I'm around people forty to fifty hours a week. I love not being around people. Uh, when I get that opportunity. So I'm never lonely. But yet, if I have a couple of people, they say, hey, you want to go do something? Yes. That, it's more the company of that person. So I like that person. I have other people that call me and say, hey, you want to? No, 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 we don't. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling too. I, actually, yeah. this is kind of reminding me. What, last week, you and I last week did a, a conversation where we speculated on whether or not quantum entanglement can take place in the human brain and right. not, we can be basically human entangled and it led yes. to a really interesting conversation. Uh, by the Oh, by the way, there was a really interesting result that came out of that completely unexpected result. I noticed it today. I was just, just randomly, I, w I wasn't even trying to, to look anything up, but because I, I always make sure that whenever we're, we're live streaming something, it goes, I always live stream to uh, YouTube, to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to Twitter, so that you know, it's getting out to as many different channels as possible. So people who want to follow what we're doing while we're doing it, they can easily check in. Well, I looked at the YouTube and my eye just caught the, uh, uh, by accident, just glanced over and saw the number of people who had watched that episode on YouTube last week. Now, typically, our episodes don't get a lot of traffic. You know, maybe 10, 20 people. Sometimes it's 40 or 50. That episode got over 1,000 eyeballs. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I think it's because we tapped into something, this idea yeah. of connecting to each other in ways that go beyond the, the obvious physical things we can measure. That's really what we're talking about here. And we're talking about there are two different kinds of of connection. There's connection to things we like and connection to things we don't like. And when we connect to things we like, like we, we were talking about earlier, we feel good. Time seems to fly. Everything just flows. It's smooth. It's just easy. And yeah. if we get into something that we don't like, it takes 17 freaking hours to get through an hour. Right? Yes, absolutely. And that that is, you know, and, and that's sort of the pr premise as we age. I, I feel we, we become more aware of yeah, I, I, I can accept that I don't like that. I, I don't, I no longer have any obligations that I don't want to do. You know, when you're growing up or you have family obligations, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go to a, a Christmas dinner with family that I, I don't like. I, I can just be blunt now. Just, just, you know, I'm not going to go to a Christmas dinner where there's always drama. Why? I don't do that. I, I choose where I want to go. Uh, based instead of obligation, I just get to choose what I want now. And 
you know, it's like, well, you, you would rather go spend time with your friends than your, your family. And I'll go, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're so much better than you guys. I, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I have no problem with that. You know, it just, it, it, but, but I, but I get, because it circled back to, I don't care the response. Uh, and that, that's the, you know, and plus those of us that have an ADHD brain, it tends to, you, you tend to figure it out as you age. So for us, people like me, uh, wow, my ADHD is such a gift now, and it was such a curse when I was younger. And it, so it's, my brain is able to, has all the, I've learned all the advantage of my ADHD brain. And also, I learned not to work in a career that doesn't uh, enhance my ADHD, or my ADHD doesn't enhance my career. I learned to figure that out. That, that, that was one of the most interesting things about last week because you and Nikki LaCroce were, 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 were discussing the ADHD thing and how yes. it affected each of you individually. And yes. you both pretty much said that same thing that yes. it, it turned, it, it started out as something rough. You, you guys talked about how the, the diagnoses and the misdiagnoses, you were talking about all that. But in the end, you both agreed it, it was actually something that was contributing to your well being. It was something yes. that actually made your life better, not made your life worse. So again, that perspective is what kicked in. Yes. That isn't that really what the root of this whole thing of of you know people getting more happy and more content as they get older. Isn't that really what the root of it is? Their perspective Absolutely. changes. I I you know I just think everything is perspective, as you know, and and you know perspective is is as you age and you realize my perspective dictates reality, and I I'm in charge of that perspective, so I'm in charge of my reality, right. and that's the most empowering thing. But also people that have been programmed to be negative and 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 always looking for the worst. I know some miserable old people. I mean, there's some old people that that are miserable. The, yeah. This the, there's years ago. Uh, I, there was a guy at the gym. He was an older guy, and uh, he probably was 75 or 80. And he was at the gym, and he would always had this horrible look on his face, just angry. And he he would never speak to anybody. So I'd walk by him and I'd go, how are you doing? Just walk, as I do everybody in the gym. And he never answered me. And I, every time I walked by him, I'd go, hey, how are you doing? And he'd just look at me and never answer me. So after probably about the 50th time of me doing that, he goes, why do you keep asking me that? I'm not going to answer you. And I go, I'm not asking for you. I'm asking for me. <laughs> and he goes, whatever. And he walks off. So... The next day, I walk by. I said, "How you doing?" He goes, "Fine." <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he always answered me after that. And and I never talked to him more than that. But whatever was going on with this guy that just refused to just he just was yeah. wanted to be angry. I also years ago, early in getting my life together. Uh, I had to, I got to wait tables. I almost said I had to wait tables, but I had the opportunity to wait tables for a while and work with the public. Uh, if you ever waited tables, and that it, 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 it could be fun and it could be miserable. And I always, the, the, it seemed like there's a certain small percentage of the people, they came out looking to have a bad night. It, oh, it, sure. The moment they sat down, they were trying to, like, oh my God, what, what is this? You know, just, and, I always wondered who would go out to dinner with their family and be and start off so miserably. I I I never understood why you would do that. Well, it's, I think I can explain it. I'm, I'm not saying it's a good explanation. I'm just saying I think I can explain it. <laughs> but it, I I kind of imagine that if they're behaving like that at dinner, they probably behave like that all the time. Of course, it's probably a very habitual thing. Right. And so, so why do people go out to dinner? Well, they think of it as a treat. I don't care what your mindset is in general. Everybody thinks of going out to dinner as a treat. I don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody. I don't care how miserable they are who didn't think of it as a treat. So right. that, that person or that group of people who had that miserable mindset at dinner, yeah, they had the miserable mindset, but it was like the, it was like the Abraham Hicks scale. It was slightly higher vibration misery. <laughs> It felt so, better than what they were at. <laughs> okay, so your hypothesis is that, that, that even as miserable as they're appearing, they're less miserable than if they were at home. Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, I never saw it that way, but uh, maybe maybe there's something to it. But I I, 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 would, I, I actually asked one guy one time, I, by the, 
I, when I first started waiting tables, you know, I lied about experience and never waited tables and got the job. And so as I, I, as I got to the, you know, I was there for three years. Uh, I was part time at the end and I, I got real confident in the job. So I, I, none of that bothered me. So, uh, I actually told a guy one time, it, it, he, he started off and he goes, uh, it, how long are you going to take me to get the drinks? And I said, well, first of all, the order is you order them and then I go get them. So <laughs> if you're already complaining about my, my lateness with the drink, it starts with you ordering it. And he goes, <laughs> he said, are you being a smart ass? And I go, sir, I, 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 I am just pointing out the order in which things do. So I, I, they order the drinks. I, I go get them right away. And he, he's looking at the menu and he goes, what do you think is the best thing on the menu? And I go, you know, my, I, I love, there's a dish there called a grouper gas bar, really nice grouper dish, dish. Okay. And, uh, he goes, my God, I don't like fish. I go, Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I thought you asked me what I thought was a great thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I have, I said, if you're asking me what you like, I said, I don't think you're going to like anything because you came here in a very bad mood. Ooh. And his wife's eyes got real big and he goes, I need to see the manager. And I said, that's a great idea. Oh, I got a manager and it, it, that manager took over the table for me because I, did, I didn't care because I knew he, he, he came to have a bad time. Yeah. So I, ha- I helped him. You did? Yeah, I did. I, I think. You only helped him in a way that he didn't anticipate being helped. Because... Well, I mean, I helped him have a bad time. Well, actually, he was doing that just fine by himself. What you helped yeah. him to do was, was to take the covers off of the fact that he felt miserable. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, the, and the manager said he was miserable the entire time. And at the end, asked him to cop the meal. And he goes, he said, your waiter was so unprofessional. I want the meal for free. He goes, no, sir. He said, I took over before you even ordered. So that doesn't count. <laughs> uh, but, but he, he left no tip either on a $200 bill. No tip. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, but there are, I just believe that people that go through life, they're miserable. They can never see it any better. I know people that, were miserable 25 years ago that are just as miserable now. And so there is an inherent group of people who are uh, just sold on the misery. They're sold on all that. But there are people that grow out of that. And there's freedom, you know, with with age in a lot of ways, not just not worrying about what people think, because it you, you start to realize there there's – we're, this is going to come to an end at some point for us. It's going to, you know, and hopefully it's a long time, whatever the time is. And a lot of people just start to realize, is, it, is all this worth it? Is are all this worry and anger and frustration, is it worth it? Or is it, you know, just, it, 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 none of it matters. So a lot of people just sort of get there that way. And, uh, but I, I, I wonder the percentage of people that, uh, as they get, let's say past 55, uh, or 60. What, how many people are happy or, or have, feel they have a better happiness, higher level happiness? And how many people don't? I, w- I would love to see polls on that. Yeah, I'm not sure what the result would be on that. What I do know is that for, for somebody who is either in the process of developing a better mindset or has already developed a better mindset, I think those are the people who get happier and more content as they get older. Of course. I think that's what the driving factor is. It has become habitual. Yes. Whereas the person who is continuing to be miserable is basically just making himself or herself more and more miserable over time. It, 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 it's not like we, we don't actually maintain an equilibrium, do we? We either no. move in one direction or we move in the other direction. We don't stay in the middle. Right. Well, and, and I know a lot of people that they that get caught up into the news and, and the, everything's falling apart, whichever, you know, depending on which side you are, who's in charge. And, and there's this narrative that I know people that really, really right now believe that these are the worst of times. These are the mm-hmm. darkest times ever. Mm-hmm. And we don't occupy the same space because I, I don't see that at all. I, you know, it, it, everything I'm looking at in my world is things are fantastic. It's great. And, uh, uh, I know there's people suffering. I'm not minimalizing that. There's always been people that are suffering. That's sort of, you know, what, what they do. And, you know, hopefully they can move on past that. But, uh, the narrative, uh, I, I, especially now, another good poll would be 
as people in today's age with all the information, the 24 hour news cycle with the very, the very biased reporting, depending on which channel, they're all biased, but which way it's biased. Uh, how, how many people are, you know, I know my dad, who was a relatively happy man his whole life. Uh, when he went into his assisted living facility and all he did was sit down and watch Fox News all day and just he became miserable and angry and scared. Sure. And, and I, I had basically had the channel removed and, uh, he, I blocked all the news channels and, uh, he was happy. Mm-hmm. He, 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 you know, so. If you get, when you buy into the narrative of, of what's going on, that could affect it too. Oh, in a big way. No yeah. doubt about that. But yeah. one of the things that I think actually points to a survey, it's not really a survey, it's more of an observation of what happens in the marketplace, but it kind of points in the direction you're talking about, is if you look at what's happened with some of the major institutions, you mentioned news, that's an institution. Um, religion is another institution. Um, any of the, the major, you know, the world of politics, um, uh, even the world of business, if you look at any of them, I think what we're seeing across the board, this is a topic we've discussed quite a bit here on the show, across the board, we're seeing a lot of institutions, long-time institutions crumbling slowly, very slowly yes. over time, at an erosion pace, like you know, a, a, a glacial pace, really, really, yes. really slow. And as that happens, like if we look back over, like if I look at the course of my life, at the beginning of my life, I was born in the 50s, um, at the beginning of my life, the, uh, the the pull of religion on America was starting to dwindle. And I look at it compared to today, the, no, the, the percentage of people who attend church today compared to the percentage of people who attended church 50, 60, 65 years ago, 66 years ago, in my case, I'm 66, is, is dramatically down. It's down, you know, like so far down that, that nobody can even dispute the fact that it's down. It's way, way down. I think right. we're seeing the same thing with news. We're seeing the same thing with network television, for for goodness sake. Now, that's partly because of the Internet. It's partly because of, you know, Netflixes and all those other kinds of things that are out there. But the fact is, people are listening to it less and less and less. They're paying less and less attention. doesn't mean that there aren't people who aren't paying attention. There are people who are rapidly paying attention. There are people who are, like you're saying, they're freaked out over how crazy things are getting. But I'm saying in the aggregate there is an overall tendency to move away from it. And I think what that really points to is the human being at, at a very basic level says, you know, I really don't want to keep focusing on what I don't like. It really doesn't pay off for me. It doesn't. And, you know, I, it's funny you say that because I haven't really thought about it. I don't have one show I watch anymore. I, mm-hmm. I Growing up, my family had shows you'd watch. You know, yeah. they, every Thursday night they would watch Law and Order, for example. Yeah, my, my uh, last show was Mash back in the early yeah yeah. 70s. I haven't had a show yeah. since Mash. Yeah, and I'll watch some TV occasionally, uh, but you know, there, there's really yeah. You know, I watch football. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't watch much baseball, of course, but uh, <laughs> I don't think you know, watch any baseball. <laughs> I don't watch. No, no, that's not true. Well. The occasional time when I need a nap, ah, I will find a okay. it, it, well, because there's so nothing. Uh, well, it does. I, in fact, it's a study show is equivalent to Ambien in helping you sleep. <laughs> just I'm just letting you know. So uh, it has the same effect uh, with, with no with no addictive side effects. But uh, but but seriously, I I don't watch all that. Now I will I watch a ton of YouTube videos on stuff I love and. Yeah, my, my, but, but mine is always, I do no, I do very little, uh, fiction stuff. Everything for me is, you know, I love to study. I love to look into my concepts. Uh, I love to meditate. You know, I, so I, my, my time is spent much differently than people back, you know, back in the day. But there is an evolution of perspective for people. And I, I think overall, like you're saying, our attention is changing more now. It's, it's, there, there's more, and, and to be fair, there are, when I grew up, there were four, three, growing up, there's three network before Fox came along later. And there were a couple local channels, you know, that were UHF, was it UHF back in the day? I don't know which one it was, but, yep. uh, and, and that was it. I mean, you had a total of five channels plus PBS, which nobody watched. And so there, there, was, there was those five I channels. Mr. I watched Miss yeah. Alien Child. I don't know about you. <laughs> I did not. I did not. Uh, it, but it, so really it, it was just focused on those things. So 
now there's I, I, it's 300 channels on my cable options. I watch none of them. And you have all the Netflix, all the Prime Video, all the Disney Plus. I mean, it, it, we have so much. But I, I read the other day that Netflix, one of the complaints about Netflix is they have so much people can't decide. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it, it, it's, a, it's like a, a exaggeration of choices. I, I, it's a different situation for me, I think. Although I wonder how many other people have this experience, but I, I have a tendency to take on a service like that and cancel it soon. Like, yeah. I, I very recently canceled Netflix after taking it on about two months earlier. Not because I couldn't decide, but because I couldn't find anything I wanted to watch. Yeah. No, I don't want to see that. No, I don't want to see that. No, I don't want to see that. No, I, it, it, I mean, it, literally, you, you do that for five minutes, you say, okay, I'm done. Turn the TV off. I don't yeah. want to watch anything. I don't like any of this stuff. And I, no. I'll, Find myself looking for an old movie that I knew that I used to like at some point, you know, so I could watch something that's minimally enjoyable to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I see that, and I, I you know, it, it's if if I didn't have Justin, he he used the internet a lot. And all that. My phone has everything I need. It could be a hot spot if I need. To, it's good enough for sending emails and stuff like that off my computer. I I wouldn't even have internet if I yeah. didn't have Justin. I, I don't need it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't need all the cable and all the, I added it up the other day and, and between streaming services and cable and internet, it's like $400 a month. Wow. And, uh, I'm yeah. Yeah. And, uh, not that I care. It's just the idea that it, it's, I get very little value for that $400. Yeah. I spend quite a bit less than that and I don't even watch that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it makes sense. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I just think that first of all, time change, but, Everything is perspective based. And so, you know, the, the, the people that I, I do believe that people who go through a lot of stuff, this, this is a hypothesis that gets on the edge of this. People that live sort of a traditional life, what I mean by that, you go to work for, uh, Dominion Energy, big company here in town. You go to work out of college, you work for them until you retire and then you get to your late place and go live. People that do that, I think, tend to be more miserable with time. People that go through stuff, like traumatic stuff and have to build up or they get I, – I think we have – those of us who've been through a lot fought for the life we have, so we value them more. And I think that the, the journey that I've went through, I will never live life in a negative fashion, you know, ever. I, I, don't, I don't do that. We talk about how important appreciation is. But the fact is, when you've been through a lot of crap like that, it's a whole lot easier to be appreciated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you remind yourself of, of, wow, I've been here and here's what I have. So you, when yeah. you take it for granted, you have a, I, I had, I had the value of losing everything. I call it the gift of losing everything. And, and, uh, at the time was not a pretty gift, but it mm-hmm. certainly gave me, a, it, it, you know, gave me, this great experience, and I fought my way back from all of that, and I have the life I have today. For the, I, so I value my life so much more today than I possibly would have. I have no way to compare that because I don't have the other life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it makes sense that that I value it so much, and you know, I I really you know I really enjoy just daily every life. I, I laugh every day. I I I only have my favorite people are people that make me laugh. I I have friends that you know that that we we. We can find humor in anything. That's my, I love those people. Over the years here on the program, I've had a number of uh, people, both as co-hosts and as guests, who are channels, channelers, uh, they're psychics, you know, all all kinds of people who are able to tap into uh, non-physical, non-tangible stuff and and get some pretty cool information. One of the themes that has played out over and over and over again in those conversations I had with people like that is the theme of the value of the contrast, the polarity of the world yeah. with them. Yeah. And I, I, it, it seems simplistic. It really does. It seems so simplistic, but the general idea is without all this negative crap, we wouldn't appreciate the positive so much. It yes. would be so important to us. And, you know, on the surface, that seems very true. And yet there's a little piece of me that says, well, that's so freaking simplistic. I mean, come on. Yeah. Be real. So, I mean, what do you do? You think that's really too simplistic, or do you really think it really is that simple? I, I mean, it. it, it I, of course, I could argue all sides of that, but my <laughs> guts—that's part of the fun. Uh, yeah, but my my gut says it's probably that simple because I 
I, I really believe life is far more simple than we allow it to be. It, okay. it, it really is far more simple. I really do believe that. Uh, it, it, you know, you get up every day. Life, life has things that happen and all you can do is can, you know, control what you can control. And part of what we can, can our, we can control is our perspective. That's the greatest gift you've been given is learning to adjust your perspective. Then that changes everything. When your perspective is dictated to you, that's when you get stuck on the other side. Yeah, it's about selecting perspective. Yeah, because yeah. uh, you know, it's really it's two steps, isn't it? The first step is yeah. learning how to have different perspectives. Yes, that's one of the yes. things the podcast has taught me because I've brought on people who've had such different perspectives from my own. So there've been yes. times where I've been really challenged, like, oh God, I got to put through that seventeen hour right. in one hour day you were talking uh, about. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but by the same token, once I I've been through that enough times, then I start. And I don't know exactly how this works, but I start to feel like I actually can be selective about perspective. Yes. I can choose yes. how I'm going to feel. I can choose what viewpoint I'm going to take. And right. that, that's freeing. It's very freeing. It, it, it's a way, it's basically a way to take control of your life without realizing you're taking control of your life. That's exactly right. And that's the, uh, for me, the, the, that understanding that when you, it isn't, your your perspective is you can select it, and that learning to you know like people say, well, no, this is what happened. Well, that's your perspective of what happened. But the the the, the and, it, and a lot of people don't get that. You know, it's like it's a fine point. Yeah, yeah, and because all I can do is life has three options for everything. This is the most basic of all concepts. You can accept something, you can change something, you can leave something. Those are the only three options you have. No matter how complicated you want to make all these situations, accept it, change it, or leave it. That's it. And within that, uh, you have to a – sub, a subtitle of that is you can also adjust your perspective of things. And that, that – you know, like I don't like what this person does. Then either you remove yourself from that person, leave it, you know, you're not going to change it. That's the problem. People think they have to change everything and they don't have the power to change it because the, the things that are in, in your control, again, are very limited. Uh, but they're very powerful because the, the, my perspective, my, uh, my attitude, like the, I know some really dumb people that have a great work ethic. They get up. They show up, they dress up, they, they're on time. They, they, you know, they, those are things that are in your control. They might not be really good at what they do, but they, they understood that's what, that's the process. So there, there's success in showing up. There's success in, uh, you know, knowing some basics. I know some really smart people that don't understand that, that can't keep a job. That's a really interesting point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. It, it, so, you know, you, you know, within within where we're at on any given day, everything is. You know, you can worry about it all, or you know, oh, what's this person thinking? Uh, but learning that I can't, ch- I can't change what you're thinking, Walt. I've tried. I, it, it's not happening. It's, it, it's not, it's I give not. you a lot of credit for trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I'm not going to be able to change that. I, I, I love our discussions and we, we always kid each other. We always have such a fun time. But the, at the end of the day, we, we probably agree on 90% of the stuff. And yeah, probably, the, yeah. the temper, the ten percent we don't agree. It look like, okay, interesting perspective. And I, 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 I don't try to change your mind. You don't try I mean, to change. Care about it? I mean, to, to me, yeah, that, yeah. that part is not even even interesting. That they, it creates <laughs> a discussion topic is about all. Yeah, it does. Exa- exactly, exactly. So you know, like the the people in your orbit and who you choose. Like I, I just choose the people in my orbit. If if if, if I spend time with somebody, to me, time, time is my greatest commodity. Now it's not money. It's not anything. Time is my commodity. So. If I spend time with you, I spend time with you an hour every week. That I value you. I've given you an hour of I, that. That's access. That's that's where value is. So if I go out to dinner with a friend, that's my I, that's my love language. Just saying, hey, this is you have you have my time. I have nothing more valuable than my time right now. I love yeah. it. 
Oh yeah. my yeah. goodness, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Like from my head to my toes, I could feel yeah. it all up and down my body. Like, oh wow, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, 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 you know, I always like to point out to people, it's like you, you, when you, when you view it that way, like I, the you know, time is currency. So if I can, you know, fit that in, and it's something I want to do, and that, it's like, yeah, this person, I took my time. And this person took their time. We want to come together and, and enjoy our time together. Yeah. And that's, you know, and, and, and a lot of people will go do stuff they don't want to do. And they, they just, see, you know, I, so I, I, I just view, I love going out with my people, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, I mean, as you were describing how we do our, uh, our shows every week for an hour and so forth, I kept thinking, wow, he's saying exactly how I feel about it. Cause yeah. I mean, to, the way, the way I tend to describe it is it's energy for me. Yes. People have asked me, what, well, you know, do you, do you want to turn it into a career? And, and you'll remember there were time, was a time when I was trying to figure out how to turn it into a career. Right. So I finally realized that could probably spoil it. I don't want to turn it into a career. I love yeah. just the pure energy of it. Yeah. I mean, you and I in the beginning, uh, I often say, I think it was me and you talking to each other uh, every week. I, I don't think anybody was listening. <laughs> Not many. It was, yeah, yeah. was there, but they were small. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but yeah, I found so much value in it. We did it for a long time together and, you know, for, for schedules changing and everything. Uh, and it's just, it's something that you, you, there was value in it just in our discussions. I just viewed it as something I really love to do and still do. And so the, the, when you look at it that way, life, life can offer so many good choices. You, you have so many, Good things to choose from. Where are you spending your time and your energy? Who you invest in? Uh, not just financially, but just again, paying attention to. And it's just, it, it all leads to this exchange of energy, energy, the perspective of life. Uh, what do you value? And, uh, I, I, there's, I have this one Facebook friend that I, I don't really know her. I know her family. Um, and, she, I think she's probably about 70, 65 or 70. Okay. And she is, I mean, anytime, if she ever comments, it's always about, well, my family abandoned me and nobody, you know, it's just, it's always negative. It's never a good post. It's always just, you know, I, 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 I curse for the rest of my life and I don't ever delete anybody, but I did send her a message one time saying, look, I, I'm sorry you're going through what you're going through. Uh, but my page is positive and stuff like that. And, you know, I, 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 I appreciate you not commenting if it's not anything but positive. And she wrote back and she said, F you. So she said, F you. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I, I said, well, thank you. And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, okay. Well, you expressed yourself nicely there, but she, she is going to die negatively. I mean, yeah. she, it, it that she's locked in. I, now, I'm not saying she couldn't have an epiphany and change it. It could be changed instantly. Yeah. But she is not accepted. She is the victim of all this. And that's the other thing. People that have the mindset that they're a victim of, of things tend to, or life tend to have situations that make them the victim of life. They make themselves the victim ultimately. Well, that was my, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're the victim of life because they believe they're the victim of life. Yeah, you focus often enough. This is the basic Abraham concept. You keep focusing yeah. on something over and over and over again. You make it a belief. Yeah. Focus on the belief over and over again. You make it a certainty. You turn Absolutely. it into reality. Yes, yes, completely. And that that's the so as you know, I, I think as people age, the more I'm, th- I'm, tr- I'm doing inventory of people, my friends and people I know that uh, the possibility to become happy is certainly there. C- become happier as you age. Uh, also the habit of staying negative is, is, is pretty prevalent. So I don't know the percentages, but it, it seems to me that, that I, I tend to more know negative people. I know more negative people as they age. Uh, but the possibility of being happier when you look at it from the lens we're viewing it right now, uh, I think there, there's a best time of your life is when you're in good health, you're gotten a little older, you're not worried about the stupid stuff, uh, you have the right people, you, you know, I, it, the right people are around me. Uh, I've, I've found those people and they're my, they're my people. And so, uh, it, it, life's sort of cruise control at this point. I love it. I have a great day. I had a great day today. It's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, what you're describing certainly rings true, I think, to anybody who's listening. It rings true to me. Uh, it rings true on a couple of levels, not the least of which is that the, since it's a matter of choice, what we're going to give our perspective to, we therefore have the ability to decide whether or not we're going to live happier or sadder lives. Uh, and like you said, there's a lot more negativity than there is positivity. So there probably are a lot more negative older people than there are positive older people. But if we're going to, you mentioned statistics. Now we don't have any statistics. So this is, I'm kind of making this up. I'm doing this based on a general broad observation of, from my own life. When I look back on people who I knew who are in our age range now, but who were, in, who were in that age range when I was like a kid, you know, so these would be like my great aunts and uncles and grandparents and all that kind of thing. When I look at their lives and how they behaved and how they thought, and I compare them to what goes on in my life now. And when I look at the people of that generation as a, as an aggregate and how they seem to act and think and talk and so forth. And I look at our generation now, I see improvement. I, fact, I see substantial improvement. Uh, I, I am seeing, and I'll even go a little further in, in describe that. Old people, when I was young, seem much older than old people now. Yes. Uh, Good way to say uh, it. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, I got, uh, you know, I can dead, I, you know, I can deadlift 500 pounds in my 60s. So, you know, I, I, I didn't know anybody back in the day that could deadlift 500 pounds in their if 60s. I tried to deadlift I, 500 pounds, I'd probably be dead. So, I mean, that's yeah, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying that arrogant and say, I, I, I have maintained that. So, I, I, I expect my body to maintain my strength. So I keep doing those things. You dance, you keep active, you do these right. things. We, uh, I don't have to work anymore. I go to work every day. I love work. I love my job. I love my career. I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, I it, remember we were discussing Ikigai, the concept of Japanese concept yeah, right. of, you know, the, you know, Japanese people have always seemed to be young when they were old. Even back, I remember thinking Asians back in the day, hope that's not racist in today's language, but Asians back in the day, uh, were, they, they always seemed to be younger because they were always so active. I mean, it's uh, Chinese culture, Japanese culture, they, they, they all, they just keep going and they live longer because of that. We, we have a tendency of, you know, the, one of the, I, I had a, I made a statement on a, uh, another podcast. I was doing a guest show on a podcast and, uh, I said, you know, retirement is like starting smoking. It, 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 <laughs> it's, it, it, it's that, it's that deadly to you. You start, it's like you never smoke when you turn 60 something, you're gonna, you're gonna retire. It's like smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. It's, it's just your, your body is just going to, it, it, it's not going to handle that well. So I, I see us, it, you know, I, I also know people my age that are very old. I mean, they, they are, uh, their mindset's old. I think I mentioned the, I won't ever go to any more class reunions because they're so depressing. But, uh, the last class reunion, I'm sitting at a table and everybody was discussing their medications. Seriously, it was, and, and they looked at me and said, what better should you go? And I, I go, none, yeah. none. <laughs> I, I don't even you call me a liar for saying none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm on none, and uh, and you know they're they're like, oh, okay, you know, like uh, like somehow I'm not in the club, you know, and uh, <laughs> and, and it, 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 but yeah, they they have a list of ten medications, and oh, I like this statin better than this statin. I'm, I don't, I'm not in this club. Uh, so you, you, I'm not I'm not making fun of people that need medication. I'm just talking about in general. The, the topic is their poor health. Uh, my topic has never been my poor health. Uh, it's never been, you know, that, that's not a driving factor. It's, it's, I'm in great health. I expect to be in great health. And it shows. And that, that's yeah. really, that, that's the best indication that it is so valuable to develop and live in a positive mindset because you're an example of that. I'm an example of that. And yeah. of us who pursue this, this way of, of thinking and feeling and believing are living examples of it. Yes. And in fact, not only is our generation well ahead of where our, say, our grandparents' generation was at, the, the generations that are coming behind us are going to be even better at it than we are. Well, now, they and, think they are. But I, 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 see, I see that trend going, I, can, can, well, you may disagree, I don't know, because you, you also have to deal with 
people as clients, but I, I see like this, this ongoing trend where as generation after generation passes through, there are little incremental steps so that each generation gets it a little bit more. They do a little bit more. They take on a little bit more positivity. They take on better life over and over and over again, each generation. I agree for the most part. I, I have seen the, the group of kids that are basically in the room all day playing video games. They're, they, they, they are particularly unhealthy. Uh, they, they, they're very isolated. They don't exercise. They eat a bunch of junk food. Uh, I, I don't, because of access, I don't know if that continues. I hope it does, but there, there, there's a group of kids right now that they don't go outside. You remember, uh, I remember talking to you about it when, uh, COVID hit. Our neighborhood looked like the Lord of the Rings. There were kids running everywhere. It's like they were wild. I mean, the, the, you know, school was shut down. They're running the streets. Looked like they hadn't had a shower in about six months. They were, uh, stinky and, and they looked like wild children having a blast outside. They're in the pond. They're doing crazy stuff. Uh, then eventually if everything went back to normal. There's never kids outside. Never. Mm. There, there, we, we have tons of kids in there, but it just, so I, I must, I, I want it to continue, but I don't know how this group is going to continue that unless drastic changes happen to their life. I, well, I think that's true. I think you could say that in any generation. Um, yeah. I, 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 what I'm observing, I'm observing as being in the aggregate in large numbers. Yes. 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 I just I'm, think this large number of, let's say 15 to 20 year old, this particular group, they're, they're all, you know, there's a few, but the aggregate of those are going to probably reverse that trend. Well, I'll, I'll add in one other piece just to kind of throw, throw, throw a little bit of a, a, a fly into the ointment. Um, this comes from, you, you know, that I was involved in, in founding a, an alternative school some 20 yes. years ago. Yes. And this comes out of the original school that was the model for that particular approach to education. It's basically an approach where the kids are in control of the school, which is enough to scare most parents. But that's another story for another time. Um, what we're talking about here is a particular kid who went to that original school who was a little extreme even for that school in that every year he would show up to school and every year, every single day of the year, he would go to this little pond. They had like six acres. It had all kinds. Of, it was a really great school, particularly for uh, a, a great grounds, I should say, for uh, particularly for kids who are exploring, you know, how to run their own lives and so forth. But among other things, they had this pond on the property. And he would go fishing in that pond every day. Now, to the best of everyone's knowledge, there were no fish in that pond at all. And it wasn't stocked either. But that didn't stop him from going fishing every day. Every, right. every mm-hmm. Day, every day, <laughs> year in, year out, every single day. Wow. At the beginning of every year, the father would go to talk to the head staff member and say, you know, my son spent the entire year last year just going fishing in a pond that doesn't have any fish in it. And the staff member says, do you believe in the model or not? The model says you let the kid follow through with what he's going to do. He's, all right, all right. After about three years of this, the kid one day found one of the staff members and says, I want to learn how to use a computer. And, well, yeah. Okay. Well, that's really kind of out of the blue. Where'd that come from? You know, uh, sure. But you, you understand, I mean, you have to know a few things like, you know, you've just been spending all of your time for years now at the pond. You, you have to know things like how to read. Um, this was back in the eighties. So it was before the modern windows and Mac and all that. It was, it was very rudimentary programming. So you had to learn how to do some math. You had to understand how to do a little programming, how to do sequential logic and so forth. So, I mean, you you have to know how to read. And the kid says, well, I know how to read. Well, when did you learn how to read? When I was fishing. Okay, well, maybe that's true, but you still have to learn how to do math. Oh, I know how to do math. Well, when did you learn how to do math? When I was fishing. To this day, they have no idea how he learned how to read. They have no idea where he learned to do math. But they do know one thing. He became a vice president at Hewlett Packard. Wow. 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 So to me, that that illustrates it doesn't matter what the pattern of the particular kid is. The kid can break out. The question oh, well, is, really? yeah, that, well, that's the question. And we, we, you know, there's always we, we one of my favorite topics that we've talked about over the years is 
uh, based on the book Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck, uh, the professor at Stanford. Right. Uh, her, her study was on kids that, uh, had uh, foster care kids and similar type kids that had been through extreme negative things. And some of the, you know, most people responded with trauma and, pro- but there was this group of kids that it was like rocket fuel for growth. And mm. she called that the growth mindset that, that when things happen, this, you know, so there's always going to be those people that grow from. I, I, I'm a big fan of resilience. I talk about resilience being the ultimate human trait. When you have resilience and don't give up, you're unbeatable. Uh, you know, and, and I've worked, you know, my, my work with foster care kids over the years, uh, I always talk about that resilience. I always say that, you know, you know, your life sucks. I'm not trying to play it. it you, you got a really bad deal. So, Let's not try to act like this is great, but what you do have, you've been through stuff that nobody, no other kid your age has been through that it, most kids haven't been through, and you, you're still here. You have resilience. So I sold that model a lot, and a lot of those kids go on to be wildly successful when their perspective changed from a victim mindset to a growth mindset. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it both scary and attractive all at the same time. It's scary. Yeah. Because, like you said, it's so easy for people to just, particularly young people to just fall into a place and just stay there and build a habit over time. And we've talked in the past about how when you do that over time, you start building a baggage over time and it becomes heavier and heavier and harder and harder to make changes and so forth. But by the same token, you've also told stories about how kids, you know, they, they, you would explain law of attraction to them. You'd explain, you know, some basics about life and all of a sudden they just on a dime. But, yeah. They turn around. Yeah. Well, I've always, you and I have agreed on this, and my work supports this. Younger people accept and implement the law of attraction in a positive way, a helpful way, much more than adults do. Yeah. Uh, once it's explained, them, you know, I have to, it's really hard for me to convince an adult that's never heard the concept that this is how all this works, right. but they have been told differently. I tell a 12-year-old, they're like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Of course not. You know, I mean, and, and they're like they're experts at it. They're like, wow, look at you know. And, and it's the reason is they don't have forty years of other programming. They only got twelve. Like, yeah, no matter how bad the program, well, that makes more sense, and it's wildly effective. So I introduce that concept to young people all the time, and uh, and I'm not saying every single one thrives in it, but but when they do, when they there's nobody better at it than kids than getting a law of attraction because they don't have all that self doubt. They just accept it and it implements almost instantly for them. It's incredible. I, I was recently listening to a recording uh, by Esther Hicks of, of Abraham Hicks fame talking about how the whole gift came to her and it first came to her in the mid 1980s. 1985 actually was the year that she cited. And she was yes. describing how at first, um, she wasn't getting, uh, you know, messages that she could just translate over. She, she said the, 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 the first time that she got some sense that there was something going on was when she realized that, that her, her head was like involuntarily bobbing all over the place and, and that there was actually a, a method to it, that it was trying to spell out the alphabet with her nose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and she eventually goes to the typewriter. Right. And, uh, it starts, uh, the Abraham starts to type for her and, uh, uh, that, that's, yeah, I mean, you're right. That's how she's Which is really fun. You know, so, but that, that was only what? That was 40 years ago. Yeah. Not quite 40 years ago. Look how that one seminal event exploded over time to the point where, I mean, law of attraction hasn't taken over the planet by any stretch of the imagination, but right. it is now embraced literally by tens of millions of people. Now that's out of yes. 7 billion, but yeah. it, it's exploded like crazy in a, in a relatively short period of time. That to me is, is an indication of just how much change actually takes place generationally. Yeah, I agree. And, and anything's possible. The law of attraction explains everything's possible. It's just, yeah. you know, you, and you know, like, like Esther talks about is when somebody says, well, is, you know, is there, Time a factor in manifesting and there doesn't have to be time. It's our belief system that requires time for things to happen. Right. So, you know, it, it isn't that, uh, you, you know, you can have instant help, but we don't believe. So you, there has to be a process for it to take place. You know, that those are the kind of things that, uh, you know, a lot of what we believe has an influence on how this works, obviously. 
So let's see if we can tie all this together because the original topic was why can people become happier and more content as they get older? And we've been kind of going back and forth on focusing on why people stay miserable and also on why people are happy. But for somebody who wants to actually make that change, we didn't really go there. Let's take a moment just to go there and make that the way that we tie it up today. Give somebody, you know, somebody who wants to start making a change for the better so they can actually live that happier, more contented life as they're getting older. What can they do? I think step one would be to realize you are, there's no one in control of your perspective but you. That's step one. Realize that. Step two is changing your perspective on situations. Uh, ask the question, what's in my control? What's not in my control? Third is, uh, implementing uh, a positive mindset, one based in gratitude every day. Be grateful every day. Uh, it's hard to do anything negative when you're in a grateful mindset. Be grateful for, you know, and you say, well, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Well, it, you're breathing. You got, you woke up today, you're breathing. That's, that's mm-hmm. not everybody has been afforded that gift. And yeah. Take that gift. And, and, you know, you, you start off today, uh, I write five things I'm grateful for every day. That's a great tool just to start off. I've been doing that now for 30 years. You still do that. Wow, that's still, so cool. Every day. I have boxes of, <laughs> of notebooks of that with the exception of 30, 30 notes that were written on toilet paper when I was in jail. Uh, <laughs> and they, they have pretty much deteriorated, but yeah, uh, they didn't, they, yeah, but they're, they're in plastic. But I have all all of my gratitude lit. If it wasn't used toilet paper, let's just put that out there. Okay? I'm it wasn't glad used. to hear that, yes. Yeah, 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 they're the same. So uh, there's so much of a mistake what I was talking about. But <laughs> I have nothing to write on but that. Uh, and, you know, I, I think those basic steps are how you get started because it's, it's really simple. It's, you know, what really matters and, you know, what are we worried about? And gratitude is always the ultimate key. And your perspective is yours to control. Once you get that going, you're good. Yeah, it's really just about changing the pattern. Yes. It's not about perfection. It's not about, oh, I got it wrong today. I screwed the whole thing up. It's simply about, over time, doing what it takes one little bit at a time to keep shifting the pattern, shifting the pattern, shifting the pattern, even yes. with the small degrees. But if you do that long enough, you turn it around. Yes. And, and, and then if you stay turned around for a while, then you start to notice it. It takes time before you notice it. That's Absolutely. It. it takes time. You don't see it right away. You, you don't see it. Uh, it because it, it, it's, at 814, I don't want to start talking neuroscience and subconscious programming, <laughs> but, uh, uh, the, the idea that it's incremental because you have to access the part of the brain that takes a while to learn, not right. the, not the part of the brain that learns instantly. The subconscious brain has to be taught slowly, has to be believed. And that's, that's that delay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, that's a good way to summarize the conversation. As usual, this was fun. <laughs> this we was had a great time. Yeah, we yeah, did. great time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I look forward to doing this every week. So have a great week, and thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.